welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Welcome to the 273rd episode of The Simple Sophisticate. Today, we're going to be talking about physical and mental good health. And with it being January and our resolutions are still going strong, yes, they are. And if you've had a bad day, keep going. It doesn't matter. You can pick it back up. This is an episode that will give you some ideas and inspirations on how to have a lifelong positive relationship with your whole being. Now, this was inspired from a book written by Twyla Tharp that came out late last year. And I'm going to share with you 12 key factors to lifelong physical and mental good health. But before I get to that, this week's petite plaisir is a simple, simple petite plaisir. And it's something that, while inexpensive, will brighten your day and be a new twist on an everyday pleasure I have talked about before on this podcast. Now, as I'm sitting here taping today's episode, the snow is swirling about, the wind is whipping, yet sometimes the sun will randomly come out as it is right now. Just a few moments ago, though, the the sun was not out and it was just blowing to beat the band. And it's been a fun weekend to just cozy in, read, walk sometimes when there is moments to get outside, but just cozy in as I shared on Friday on Instagram and also in the weekly newsletter. Speaking of the weekly newsletter, if you haven't stopped by the blog, Last Friday's This and That, so just a few days ago, This and That, there was a giveaway, and there is still time to enter this giveaway. If you are a Francophile or a foodie, love stepping in your kitchen, you will want to check out this giveaway. The winner will be announced this Friday on the weekly This and That post, and it is pretty spectacular. Sharon Santoni has kindly offered one of her stylish French boxes to a lucky Simply Luxurious Life or Simple Sophisticate Listener Reader, and that will be arriving at your home, if you're the lucky winner, mid to late February. And they are pretty spectacular. So go to the blog, the simplyluxuriouslife.com, visit the most recent this and that post, and you'll see it in the title of the post, the date of the this and that and giveaway. So go to the blog and give yourself a chance to win. But now let's get to today's topic, 12 key factors to lifelong physical and mental good health. I want to begin with a quote from the book I was previously talking about by Twyla Tharp. She states, Vitality means moving through life with energy and vigor, making deliberate choices and putting to good use the time and energy that we have been granted. Now, this comes from her most recent book titled Keep Moving Lessons for the Rest of Your Life. Knowing how to care for our body, which we must not forget includes the mind, is a lifelong course of learning. Beginning with the basics of how food is fuel and energy expends said fuel to understanding which fuel is best and why and how our body repairs itself and ultimately what the body and mind truly are capable of regardless of our age. Understanding and then applying this knowledge will have a powerfully positive effect on the overall longevity as well as quality of our life. Highly decorated and revered American dance choreographer Twyla Tharp released a new book this past fall, and as I appreciated her insights in her previously published book, The Creative Habit, I was especially curious to read her new book, Keep Moving, as she herself is in her mid-70s and more fit than most adults in their prime. However, what I quickly discovered is that Keep Moving is not only about the physical movement we must continue throughout the duration of our lives, but the continual movement of our thoughts, ideas, and way of living and thinking about the world that is itself ever-changing and evolving entity. So today I'm going to share with you 12 key factors for living and enjoying a physical and mental well-being for the entire length of your life. Let's get into this list. Number one is practice growth. Now today I'm going to be sharing a handful of quotes, more than a handful of quotes, and all of these quotes come directly from the book. So if I don't attribute or say Twyla Tharp after the quote, just note that all of the quotes in today's episode are from the book. Here is the first quote from the book. Age is not the enemy. Stagnation is the enemy. 
both physically and mentally, choose to perpetually be a dynamic individual. Instead of becoming complacent or resigned that certain capabilities are no longer possible once we hit a certain age, vow to yourself to always keep your body moving as well. And perhaps most importantly, your mind. Rather than reminiscing about the past, make sure it is celebrated and or learned from and then put your focus on moving forward well, learning something new in your next venture into something that provokes your curiosity. Let go of past hurts and anger that may be lingering to liberate yourself to create a better present and then a greater future will unfold. Assess your daily routines. Are they working for you? If not, whip them into shape. And I have an episode that may help you do just that. Listen to episode 272 from last week for help on how to accomplish this particular change. Here's a quote with regards to the concept of growth or stagnation. And while initially it's going to sound like it applies to physical movement and physical looks and things along those lines, This is a metaphor for everything in our lives from the book. Attempting to maintain the status quo, smoothing our skin and keeping our tummies trim, become distractions that obscure a larger truth. Attempting to freeze your life in time at any point is totally destructive to the prospect of a life lived well and fully. All animate creatures are destroyed when frozen. This is not a worthy goal. End quote. So number one is to simply practice growth. Make that an everyday lifelong habit in everything that you do. Number two, choose and then cultivate the life you want to live. Quote, I chose my life. It did not choose me. End quote. Inevitably, life will throw onto your journey's path trauma, loss, and pain. But how you choose to work with these life events will determine the overall quality of your life. You can choose to wallow and seek out sympathizers that allow you to remain in your pain or frustration or anger. Or you can acknowledge the pain, let yourself work through it in a healthy manner, and continue to strive forward. Quote, the life we choose pays dividends. The life that we let choose us will bankrupt us. End quote. Contrarily, you will need to find the courage within yourself to choose to step away from the group when it feels limiting or confining or does not align with the life you wish to live or dare to create. Nothing need happen that is negative, just an instinctive feeling that something does not work for you. Heed your instincts, explore them gradually, and when you have some footing, it need not be a perfect stance, step away from the group. I am confident you will be grateful you did, more and more so with each passing day. You may be wondering, how does this point, number two, correlate with our physical health? Well, anytime we choose a life that we want to live, we energize ourselves. Oppositionally, when we follow, when we go along to appease or to not create conflict, our energy lessens. So much so that we find it hard to motivate ourselves to care for our overall health. It may not occur and most likely will not occur initially as we follow. But with time, our excitement about living life is dulled when we follow. And when we no longer see the joy in living life because we haven't chosen this life, it has chosen us and we feel stuck within it. We do not consciously or unconsciously invest in it anymore. And tending to our health is a fundamental investment. So number two is choose and then cultivate the life you want. Number three, see your body's good health as a full-time job for a lifetime. You may be saying, oh my gosh, I don't need another job. But hear me out. Much of society may appear to be modeling that as we age, we become less physical. But the reality and what needs to be realized, Tharp argues, is that, quote, the older we get, the more we should commit to physical activity, end quote. Ironically, we could have moved less in our youth as our body was helping us out far more naturally than it is able to do on its own as we age. But the benefit of being an active child and young adult is that we can take these good habits and let them be the foundation of our physical activity throughout our lifetime. The benefits of physical activity have been researched and proven time and time again, from sharpening our mind to, quote, expanding our social, emotional, and intellectual well-being, end quote. A shift in how we view physical activity can help tremendously to finding infinite wells of motivation to move our bodies on a regular basis. First, make it enjoyable. Find something you love doing. I used to be one of those gym rats who would visit my neighborhood gym 
And, and at that particular point in my life, I was living in Northwest Portland. This was in my early to mid twenties. Nearly every day I would go there, hop on the treadmill and walk or run for 20 to 30 minutes. Granted, any physical activity is absolutely applaudable, but I will admit I felt as though I was in a cage. It didn't really work for me. My lifestyle has changed significantly. As many of you know, over the past 14 years, my physical activity is usually outside nearly every single time. And the only indoor physical practice I do, and I thoroughly enjoy it, is my weekly yoga class. Most importantly, I have found a way of staying physical that I enjoy. And so that's what's the key part here. Find what works for you and how you can incorporate your physical and natural environment into your playground. And then just go and have fun, play. Let that be your physical activity and just make it regular. Tharp reminds readers of the importance of why we choose to exercise. Quote, let's not burn calories. Let's use our calories. You're burning calories to acquire skills. End quote. When we make this shift of why we are exercising, the motivation is more likely to remain and become habituated. And you may remember in last week's episode 272, we were talking about tiny habits. This was all in BJ Fogg's new book, Tiny Habits. And the idea of of emotion has to feel good for something to become habituated. And that habit can take place very quickly if we thoroughly enjoy it and has a positive emotion attached to it. So that's why it's imperative that we do something we sincerely enjoy. So to wrap up point number three, here's a quote from Twyla. Here's what I know. A life that gives the body its due is a happy life, end quote. So that's number three. See your body's good health as a full-time job for a lifetime. Number four, pull up the anchor of the past and sail. Quote, unless we embrace the condition of change, the past will act as an anchor preventing growth. I've always been an advocate of habit, but with time, unchecked or unnoticed habits will hold you back, end quote. Life has many chapters, and not one will be exactly like another. Living consciously gives us the daily practice of assessing what is working and what is not. As Tharp suggests in that quote, habits are helpful when they are helpful to living the life we wish to live. However, habits that go unassessed are the anchors we need to pull up so that we can sail toward and eventually fulfill our true potential. There are many examples in our lives in which a habit worked exceptionally well for a period, but to continue would harm our progress and and our need to grow. If you are a parent, for example, whose children have left the nest, there will be new habits to add and other established habits that will need to be pulled up, so to speak. If you are an individual who needed to work with great dedication to complete a degree or complete a particular project or establish themselves in their career requiring long hours as there were deadlines to meet, etc., the habits that enabled you to be focused and strong in dedication will need to be relaxed so that you can find the balance to enjoy the life you have worked so hard to secure. So number four is about pulling up the anchors of the past and letting yourself sail And that takes a conscious choice of sitting down and assessing the habits that are working and those that are not. Number five, choose optimism. We've talked about optimism quite a bit on this podcast and in my latest book as well, on the blog also, but let's talk about it through Tharp's perspective. Tharp acknowledges that, quote, aging can promote a condition identified by psychologists at the University of Pennsylvania as learned helplessness. Believing we cannot change our outcome leads to lethargy. Negativity and stagnation go hand in hand, end quote. The remedy is actually quite simple, but it does require us to become clear about the life we wish to live, to do the homework of living, living well, and being conscious of our intrinsic motivators, as well as the external motivators, and determining which truly align with our most sincere self. Tharp suggests, and I concur, what we need to do is align our actions with our values. Often we say we wish to live one way, but our actions speak differently. Sometimes it will take grand courage as we will have to speak up to those in our lives who will be affected if we change our routine, our way of engaging, etc. But often it is how we speak to ourselves, how we allocate our time and where we spend our money. When you begin to see how to better align your actions with your values, it becomes easier to be optimistic because you are now fully supporting the life you wish to live and not unconsciously fighting against it. Momentum happens more freely without resistance. The primary point is we have more control over the quality of our lives than we may realize. We are not helpless. 
hopeless, and we need not accept that things cannot be different. They can be and will be when you choose to shift how you live your daily life. A simple way to begin being more optimistic is to see the simple beauty and awesomeness in the everyday. When you focus on the good, on the positive, on the beauty, you begin to see more of it. Inspire those around you to see more of it as well, and ultimately begin to create more of what you wish to see than what you do not. Be sure to check out my Instagram account and then check the hashtag TSLL Elevate the Everyday for simple visual reminders of everyday beauty. I try to go about posting the pictures um, and then adding this hashtag when they are simply just moments that happen in my everyday, nothing super spectacular to the outside world. But for me, I see something that just makes me smile. And so if that's inspiration or a reminder for you to do something of the same in your own life, then be sure to check out that hashtag. I provide a link to that on the show notes. Now we have a few sponsors that have made this episode possible. So I want to introduce those to you now and I'll be back with the remainder seven items on this list of factors for lifelong physical and mental good health. Rothy's has quickly grown to a most loved gotta have them brand. It's no surprise they have over 1,000 nearly perfect reviews. They're stylish, sustainable, comfortable, and washable, all in one pair of shoes. They're the perfect flats for life on the go. I've had the opportunity to have my own pair of Rothy flats, choosing to wear their merino camel pointed toe flats. I have been wearing them to school when heels just aren't what I want to wear. Because as you know, Simple Sophisticate listeners, I do enjoy wearing my heels. But when I need my flats and I always need a quality pair of flats, I have been loving and going to Rothy's each time. The camel color was an exclusive print for a certain amount of time. So they do have styles that are in a limited edition and for a certain amount of time only. So scoop up the ones you love quickly. What I also appreciate about these is the comfort level. I cannot express how comfortable they are. More and more staff members have pointed out my shoes recently and they quickly ask, are those Rothy's? And I quickly say with a smile, yes, they are. And they ask how comfortable they are. And I say without hesitation, absolutely. In fact, after eight hours of teaching, I want to keep wearing them. They are like a slipper, but they look super chic and stylish. Rothy's are seamlessly knit using thread made from plastic water bottles. So they're ultra comfortable as soon as you slip them on. That's right. There's a zero break in period in these shoes. Plus Rothy's always come with free shipping and free returns and exchanges. No risk, no worries, no reason not to try. And another major bonus, they're fully machine washable. Every time they need a refresh, you can simply toss them in the washing machine. It's like getting a fresh pair every laundry day. Rothy's owns and operates their manufacturing workshop where they prioritize sustainability every step of the way. Plus Rothy's ship directly in their shoebox. No unnecessary packaging. These are feel-good shoes in more than one way. Go to rothys.com slash simple to get your new favorite flats. That's rothys, R-O-T-H-Y-S dot com slash simple. Comfort, style, and sustainability. These are the shoes you've been waiting for. Head to rothys.com slash simple today. Did you know that many conventional deodorants contain aluminum, which forms a plug in your sweat glands to keep you from sweating? Yikes! Native's deodorant is made without aluminum, so you can feel better about what you're putting on your body. Native deodorant is made with ingredients you've heard of, like coconut oil and shea butter. You wear deodorant every day, shouldn't you be able to understand the ingredients list? And making the switch to an aluminum-free deodorant does not mean you have to sacrifice on performance. Native will keep you smelling and feeling fresh all day long. And with over 10 cents, including their classics and rotating seasonals, you're guaranteed to find one you love. Their classic scents include coconut and vanilla, their most popular, lavender and rose, the one I've chosen love, cucumber and mint, and eucalyptus and mint. Native comes in a variety of options for women, men, and even teens. They also offer an unscented option and a baking soda-free formula for those with sensitivities. And there's no risk to try. Free shipping on every order, and Native offers 30-day free returns and exchanges in the United States. Still not convinced? Check out the over 9,000 five-star reviews from happy customers who made the switch to Native. 
As I mentioned just a second ago, I have been using the lavender and rose varietal and it does work and it smells fantastic. And it also leaves me with a peace of mind knowing what I'm putting on my body is meant to work with my body, not against it. As a simple, sophisticated listener, you have the opportunity to take 20% off your first purchase. Visit nativedeodorant.com and use promo code sophisticate during checkout. Again, Take 20% off your first order when you visit nativedeodorant.com and use the promo code SOPHISTICATE and feel good about what you're putting on your body. Welcome back. Let's get back into the remaining seven key factors to lifelong physical and mental good health. Number six is plan. Put your hopes into action. Currently, I find myself moving into the planning part of customizing my home, but admittedly, it is easier to dream and hope that it will all just magically come together. But hoping and dreaming won't bring it to fruition. While certainly the first part of the journey of making anything happen needs to begin with a hope or begin with a dream, but it cannot be where we remain. Referring back to the premise of Tharp's book and number one on this list to practice growth, growth needs to be perpetually occurring in our lives. And so we must step forward and put our hopes into action. How? By planning and tending to each step listed in that plan. Sometimes it is hard to actually make the step toward our desired goal, but the momentum provided with each step makes the next step a little bit easier. Seeing your money being spent on whatever detail, item, or necessary piece of the journey needs to be spent can be initially hard to do or to see, but if your plan is clear and your goal is in alignment with your values, you will reflect upon the money spent as an investment and be thankful for the courage to step forward and put your hopes into action. So number six is plan, put your hopes into action. Number seven is strengthen and maintain your stamina. Quote, while many of our physical tools diminish noticeably as we age, speed, flexibility, and power, we don't have to lose stamina. End quote. Moving your body, keeping your muscles strong on a regular basis will fundamentally keep your stamina strong. And what helps build and strengthen and maintain your muscles? Repetitions done regularly. It may not be fun initially, but in reference to number three, find an approach to physical movement that engages you and cultivate it into a habit that is part of your daily and weekly routine. Tharp has a handful of suggestions on pages 96 through 97. Eventually, the stamina turns into endurance, which is, quote, a combination of willpower power, focus, intention, and grit, essentially a matter of character and mental toughness, end quote. I want to wrap up point number seven, strengthen and maintain your stamina with another quote from the book that I think really drives this idea of stamina home. She writes, the wonderful thing about stamina, it doesn't deplete itself through a long period of grinding work. With sustained commitment, it builds and builds up to the moment when you need it most. So if you're thinking, oh, this is just a one-time thing, this is so, you know, pointless, this isn't going to pay off, I can't keep this up, it builds on itself. And that's the beautiful thing about keeping a regular routine. It will eventually be something that you make yourself so strong in stamina that when you reflect on your earlier self, you'll be impressed and amazed and thankful that you've kept up that steady routine. So that's number seven. And again, she talks about very specific things you can do in the book. Number eight, small changes can make a big difference. Quote, when I can't build a cathedral, I build a bridge to get there. End quote. Whether you are trying to welcome new habits into your life as the new year begins, trying to build a dream that will take time to materialize, the small steps, the small actions, and small everyday dedicated efforts will eventually lead to the grand change and actualization you seek. That is as simple as it truly can be. And so keep that quote in mind. You may not be able to be to build that cathedral today, but put down some part of the cathedral. Make a step toward the cathedral. Do something small enough, but in the right direction that will eventually lead you there. That's number eight. Number nine, build a foundation for your future. Compound interest plays a role in our physical and future physical lives, as well as in our financial lives. When we, quote, work hard now to reap greater rewards in the future instead of finding ourselves in a panic at our dwindling bank account, end quote, we are building a future of a wealthy, good, healthy life well into our later years. 
the working hard is doing what you can now as early as you can in your life physically to maintain the three pillars of a healthy body, strength, flexibility, and aerobic activity. I've detailed more of these in all sorts of different health and fitness posts in the Simply Luxurious Life blog's archives, and I provide a link to those on the show notes. Start where you are, but push through the necessary comfort, also known as challenging pain. But be aware of the difference between that challenging pain and warning or chronic pain. Each time I have taken a week off from yoga or the first time I hop on my skis in the new winter season, 48 hours later, my muscles are talking to me. It is not a bad pain. In fact, I applaud myself for pushing myself further, but I am also reminded to get back on the regular schedule so that I do not have to feel it every time for the same reasons. So that's number nine. Start building your foundation now because that compound interest will pay off down the road. Number 10, decludge. And I'll just spell this out to you so you can understand what word I'm trying to say. It's D-E-K-L-U-D-G-E. Tharp introduced me to this term. The term is kludge. And in her book, she shares that kludge is a short-term inelegant solution. In other words, it is using a convenient fix for a hiccup or a problem, but it's not the best fix. So to decludge is to check our ego at the door. And this is not easy for most of us and especially hard for some of us. As the pages of our book, also known as our lives, are turned and new chapters arise, quote, you have to be willing to find other ways of being in the world beyond those that have served you well throughout your life, end quote. In other words, we have to self-assess, which is a good skill to hone no matter where we are in life's journey and to practice it regularly. We have to become aware and then challenge unproductive behaviors in order to live our most fulfilling and best life. Tharp suggests our kludges are, quote, all trade-offs and allowances we make to deal with deflating circumstances by ignoring, tolerating, or avoiding the situation. Sometimes we're aware that we're settling for less than optimal. Sometimes we believe we don't have any other choice. We treat them as systematic, the way things are. These kludges shackle and slow us down, end quote. Anytime you adhere to the way you've always done it as your sole reason for doing something, most likely you've found a kludge that needs to be let go. The good news is that with maturity, decludging has the ability to be far easier. Quote, with maturity, we've learned that no one else is responsible for our success or survival. It's up to us to erect a stable scaffolding that's not stressed by temporary fixes and what is left can be pretty amazing. So number 10 is decludge. Number 11, adjust to improve your life. Quote, all master adjusters learn to push their strengths and drop everything else. Resentment, insecurity, doubt, physical handicaps, end quote. With life, we have the opportunity to gain experience. And with that experience, we can handle new life experiences far better than without the earned experience. And perhaps life's difficulties never become easier, only different because we have the past experiences. But because we have the past experiences, we are able to better and more easily navigate through them without working ourselves up into a frenzy or ratcheting up our stress levels unnecessarily. In other words, we become better able to soar through life and not be knocked down by the goals and gusts that will inevitably happen because we know how to foresee their coming further from a distance and either avoid them altogether or when caught by surprise, dance with them rather than fight them so as to preserve our energy to better enjoy the many good moments that await on the other side of the storm. So number 11 is learn to adjust to improve your life. Last but not least, number 12, and I saved this for the last one for a reason, and I think you might be able to figure out why as I go through it. 12, become keepers of the quotidian. Quote, finding absolute beauty in the humble, the everyday, the living, the growing, the becoming is a skill that can be practiced with more than just the eye. End quote. Using all of our senses as we go about our day is a skill to master for living well. Sometimes being so acutely aware can be heartbreaking, which means we need to live consciously and choose how we engage with the world and who we engage with. However, once we are aware of the power of engaging all of our senses, our everyday or quotidian lives magically appear to be in brilliant Monet-esque color. 
from the scent of the rain that falls on the dry ground to the feel of the fresh seasonal produce picked up at the market to the sound of chirping birds enjoying their morning meal in your yard's bird feeder. When we pay attention to these details with our whole being, all of our senses, our appreciation and love of life rises. So number 12 is become keepers of the quotidian. Good health asks of us to invest each day, but the investments need not be expensive or backbreakingly painful. How wonderful to understand that simply by instituting and enjoying daily habits, we can improve our overall well-being to further ease our mind that not only is our present more enjoyable to experience, but so too will be our future. I highly recommend Twyla Tharp's new book, Keep Moving. I I whizzed through it during my two-week holiday break this past month um, as she offered her own experiences as a renowned dancer and choreographer who is now in her 70s, as I mentioned at the top of the podcast. This is evidence of what indeed does work. The book as well introduces readers to many others who she knows and is inspired by on her own journey of good health and wellness of mind and body. And so I've included a link to the book on the show notes, the simplyluxuriouslife.com slash podcast 273. And I've also included a few other posts from the archives, episodes from the archives about how to get and stay in shape, how to treat your body like a temple, but also four healthy habits for continual self-growth, since that's what this is all about, continuing to grow, not staying stagnant, and really elevating the quality of our lives. Now I'll be right back with this week's Petit Plaisir. This week's Petit Plaisir is a simple touch that you can add to the everyday beauty in your home. Um, Over the past couple of months, if you've been following me on Instagram, you've seen that some of my bouquets are starting to change a little bit that I include in my house. And part of the reason I've been doing this change is out of um, necessity, because when I go to Trader Joe's or wherever I'm getting my flowers, um, as I get my my weekly uh, bouquet or bouquets from my home, there's obviously in the winter less and less varieties or fewer and fewer varieties to choose from. And so I want to choose the best flowers that'll last the longest, but I also want to choose flowers that I can afford. And what I've been doing is simply including similar hues, but with different textures. So for example, I included um, white hydrangeas with ornamental cabbages. So they both had white in them, but then there was a touch of green um, in the ornamental cabbage. And it really added a depth because of the different textures that I was just like, oh my gosh, that looks great. I never thought about that. And it was also very inexpensive because I only had to buy one of the hydrangea bouquet and then the ornamental cabbages were actually very inexpensive, just a couple dollars for five of them. And so for fewer than $10, I had a bouquet and this bouquet lasted for over a week in the house. In fact, the ornamental cabbages went on for a couple weeks. And then just this weekend, I took my white hydrangeas. I love my hydrangeas. They're very inexpensive at Trader Joe's, fortunately. I know that's not always the case, but since it is, I'm taking advantage of it. Um, and I paired them with chamomile, um, as you'll see in the picture on today's show notes. And it just adds a different texture, a bit of a delicate texture as to the grand, the grandeur that the hydrangeas tend to have. And then it also had the pop of yellow in the chamomile, which I love. So the monochromatic is there, but it's not entirely there. And the texture is different. So it's a little bit of a shift from one of the petite plaisirs I did a handful of years ago about mono, monochromatic bouquets. And it just adds a little bit of a less perfect, less refined look, which just adds a touch of personality. In my, from my perspective, obviously you can do however you want, but don't be afraid to mix and match different ones. I'm a fan of simplicity, as you know, and I think many of you are as well. But at the same time, the simplicity has to be simple on my budget. And it also has to be something that's going to make me smile. And so just adding a bit of whimsy with the chamomile to these really formal hydrangeas just was something that was inexpensive and turned out better than I expected. So something to try um, at home if you're trying to add a touch of mother nature to your winter home, if that's what you're in the middle of right now. If you're not, you're going to have so many more varietals to pick from. So have fun. Um, But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed uh, this particular petite place here. I had fun playing with it and figuring it out. And you can see this picture of the most recent bouquet on the show notes, the simplyluxuriouslife.com slash podcast 273. 
I hope you've enjoyed this week's Petit Plaisir, where each week ideas are shared to make the everyday all the more enjoyable. Tune in at the end of each episode where I'll recommend a book, a film, a show, a recipe, anything that is a simple pleasure to satiate your sophisticated taste. Before I wrap up today, I want to send out a handful of thank yous. Number one, um, a recent listener um, and reader of the blog, Sarah, who I believe lives in the UK, made the Simply Luxurious Life's recipe of the French croissants and that were in this year's um, or season two's the Simply Luxurious Life Kitchen. And she shared her process along the way and she did such an amazing job. They look wonderful. Um, I've shared them on my IG stories. If you're listening to this on Monday, if not, go to viewers recipes on the highlight reel. And I really appreciate viewers and readers and listeners who share how they've incorporated the recipes in their own life from the Simply Luxurious Kitchen's cooking show. So thank you, Sarah, and enjoy some croissants for months to come (laughs) because you can freeze them as you did and I do as well. And that just makes for a lovely weekend without the work from now on for quite some time. I would also like to thank two different individuals for leaving a review this past month in December. Um, This first review comes from the United States. It's from... Net Net 99 and they wrote five stars delightful show love it I'm so glad I found this podcast Shannon comes across as genuine friendly and she allows us to imagine a dream life while encouraging us to believe we can make that dream come true every day love it thank you very much Net Net 99 this life this simply luxurious life that you are living right now most likely and even more so tomorrow is absolutely a reality and I feel fortunate to be able to share it with you and for everyone who shares their life with us on the blog or the podcast demonstrates that we all do it a little bit differently and that's what makes it pretty awesome the next review I want to share is from Portugal This review is from Madalena and she writes the queen of podcasts, five stars. I'm a listener from Portugal and I have listened to the podcast since I don't know how long. This is the first podcast I ever listened to. And after that, others came and went, but this one is always present. I especially enjoy the home and living insights and the importance of simple pleasures in an ordinary life with an ordinary income. Congratulations on the show. And I hope it continues for many years. Kind regards, Madalena. Madalena, thank you for continuing to tune in. Thank you for sharing what you love about this podcast. And I look forward to bringing you more simple pleasures and simply luxurious life inspiration for years to come as you requested. (laughs) If you too are enjoying the Simple Sophisticate podcast, please do leave a review or simply rank it on iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcast. It does so much to help future listeners as they can discover what this show is all about. Wishing you a wonderful brand new week with no mistakes in it, right? Just like Anne Shirley said in Anna Green Gables. Sure enough, it's going to be a good one. We will find the good stuff. We will find the beauty. It's there. It's waiting to be found and seen and appreciated. I so appreciate your time and interest. Bon jour. Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. For more ideas and inspiration throughout the week, visit the blog, thesimplyluxuriouslife.com, or pick up my latest book, Living the Simply Luxurious Life, Making Your Every Days Extraordinary and Discovering Your Best Self, now available on Audible and wherever audiobooks are sold, as well as in paperback and ebook versions. You can also pick up my first book, Choosing the Simply Luxurious Life, A Modern Woman's guide, which is also available in paperback, ebook, and as an audiobook as well. To stay caught up on the most recent episodes of the podcast, blog post, the cooking show, and receive exclusive news as well as an extra dose of inspiration to jumpstart your weekend, subscribe to the Simply Luxurious Life's free weekly newsletter, which arrives in your inbox each Friday to enjoy with a hot cup of tea or cup of morning coffee. Until next Monday, I'm your host, Shannon Abels. Bonjour.